Jeremiah, Jeremiah the prophet, Jeremiah 5, and we want to go into the 12th verse, the 5th chapter of Jeremiah. And the prophet shall become wind, and the word is not in them, thus shall it be done unto them. Now listen to this. And the prophets shall become wind, and the word is not in them, thus shall it be done unto them. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this his people would, and it shall devour them. You see, there's all parts of this thing that seems to do what? Go on and on and on and on and on. Now it says in the 12th verse, I should have started there, didn't I? I said I was going to. They have belied the Lord and said, It is not he, neither shall evil come upon us, neither shall we see sword or famine. And what he's saying is, again in the 13th verse, and I'm sorry that I messed that up, but when he went to the 13th verse, he said, look, these prophets, they're, they're wind. My word's not in them. Why? Well, you know, and this is the thing I used to say to this nation. You've got to understand if you will study, and I, I, I've got tapes somewhere that begins to show what, what, how does God bring judgment. And if you look at it and you, and you begin to realize that there are certain ways that he has always brought it. Now, we're not going to go through all those ways, but some of those ways is through storms, through diseases, through wars, all right? But he sends that, and he sends that in that way. So you've got to realize that God, God is able and more than able, and, and so I'm saying, look, you understand that, 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 that the peace has left the earth. Now, I, I remember when I uh, received the open vision, and I spoke to the people and prophesied that vision and, and told them, I said, God said to tell you that, the, that peace has now left the earth, that there will be tumult all over the face of this earth. There will be uprisings. There will be nation come against nation. All the fulfillment of 24 of Matthew into those areas is, 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 is going to be completely fulfilled within this time, in this time, era, this time zone or uh, segment. And I said, you've got to understand something. The Lord said the only peace that there's going to be left on this earth is going to be those that have me on the inside of them. That's going to be the only peace. Now, isn't that the way it is today? There isn't peace. If you begin to watch these, these uh, uh, TV commentators, there's no peace in them people. All they're trying to do is stir the Democrats against the Republicans, the Republicans against the Democrats. Uh, it doesn't matter what President Bush says, uh, CNN, NBC, ABC, they, they're up in arms, and all the rest of them up in arms and calling him. I, I'm going to tell you something, folks, and I, and I mean this with all my heart. In my granddad's day, they'd have been hung for treason. Do you understand what I'm telling you? They would have been hung for treason in my granddad's day. I don't care whether you agree or you don't agree with that man. He is the leader and he is the president of the United States of America. End of, end of subject. You would honor that and you would honor that because he is. Why? Because whatever system that we have, good, bad, or ugly, put him into office. But you see, all that the Democrats could do now is to undermine the Republican president. Now, I'm not going to try to tell you that, bless God, the Republicans are any better than that, because they're not. Any, any time that Clinton or anybody else was in this room, then it happened, then, bless God, it took place, and, 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 and bless God, it, it got itself all out of hand, and that was the end of that. And that's where it all came down. And, and actually, when I, I suppose with, with the end of everything else that takes place, when you begin to examine this stuff, that we, we are what? We're just part of what God is using on the face of this earth to get the things done that has to be done. Now, can I, can I, and I will tell you that, bless God, that, that, that God is using people like CNN, people like NBC, ABC, CBS, everybody else that wants to get into the thing, that, bless God, He's letting them do what? He's letting them undermine all this stuff. I mean, you know, I love because we have, have a big thing in, 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 in Congress about whether you can really burn the American flag or not. Now, folks, again, in my granddad's day, that was called high treason. 
You burn that flag in front of some of them boys that have been over there and watched their buddies die, they'd have shot you right on the spot. But oh, not us. Bless God, we got rules, you know. We got rights, you know. I got news for you. We went to seed with what we call rights in this country. That's just, that, that, that's just, you know, that's just, that's just part of what that's about. That's just part of what's going on with that thing. So we, we get ourselves in, into the place. Now, now I love the, uh, to go over into that fifth, fifth place. I'm uh, um, fifth place, the fifth chapter. We'll get it all set up here in a minute. Now, where it says in the, in the, in the 30th verse, it says, a wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so, and what will ye do in the end thereof? Now this very easily, uh, brothers and sisters, can be and will be put into, uh, bless God, right now today and the scenario in which we have right here in the United States of America. That where we're at in this thing is very simple. We're at a point in time where we want the prophets to prophesy falsely. Now, again, you're not going to find churches opening their doors up and saying, you know, Prophet Deckard, we want you to come and we just want you to shear us just as, just as nice as you can shear us with the Word of God. No, you're not going to hear that. What you're going to hear is, we want somebody to come in and prophesy, oh, I see that you are a great one of God, and, and God's going to use you even to the raising of the dead. And oh my, brother, I see you own a business and making millions of dollars and giving half of it to me. And, and bless God, I see you, sister, that you're out here doing this, and oh, what a wonderful thing it is, and peace, peace. And don't listen to these doom and gloom prophets, because I'm here to tell you that God has got everything in hand. This is America, and nothing bad can ever happen to America. God bless America. And that's what they want. That's why, and I'm, I'm here to tell you, because what? The priests bear rule by their means. They make up the rules as they go. And my people, they love it to have so. And what were you doing? What are we going to do in the end? See, that's what I keep saying. Oh, you want to believe all that bonky, malarkey? Fine. But what are we going to do in the end thereof? What are we going to do when this thing comes down? What's going to happen when I'm right and they're wrong? I'll tell you what's going to happen. You have never seen the chaos that there's ever been in this world until this thing comes down around the ears of America. And then you're going to see out and out absolute chaos like this world has never seen. You're going to see it. Why? Because they wouldn't listen. They hardened their hearts. They didn't want to have the things of God. What they wanted to do was to what? Have their own way and to do things as they saw that they should do. Let's go to let's go to Jeremiah 14. Jeremiah 14. Well, it gets better. Starting in the 13th verse. Let me show you something. Let's start in the 10th verse. Jeremiah 14:10. It says, "Thus saith the Lord unto this people, thus they have loved to wander, they have not refrained their feet, therefore the Lord doth not accept them." He will not remember their, th 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 now remember their iniquity and visit their sins. Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people, for their good. Now you know that was, what, that was the thing that God told me. When God, when God said to me that he was taking peace from this from the earth and tumult was going to come up in the land and all this stuff was going to take place and all this stuff was going to happen, and when God, when all this stuff took place and all this stuff began to happen, that bless God, the Lord said to me, he said, tell the people not to pray any longer for America. And I said, what? He said, tell the people not to waste their time praying for America for the judgment is set. The slaughter of America is set. It's at hand. And I said, oh, dear God in heaven. I said, that's going to go over real well. He said, I didn't ask you how well it was going to go over. He said, I told you to prophesy it. And so I prophesied it, and it went over just that well. People call me everything, including a traitor, including everything less than being a minister. But you know what God said? He said, you tell the people to begin to pray for their families, to intercede for their families. For that's where they need the bulk of their intercession, because it's going to begin to rip families apart. Now, folks, this is back... In, in, in either 89 or 90. 
that families are going to begin to be ripped apart, and they're going to be ripped apart by, bless, bless God, uh, the, the, the spirits that are, that are trouncing up and down in this earth. And God, and God said, and that's just the way, and that's just the way it's going to happen. And so I, I told him. It said in that 12th verse, when they fast, I'll not hear their cry. When they offer burnt offering and, and oblation, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by pestilence. And that's all because of why? Because, bless God, that they would not listen to what God was trying to tell them. So what's going to happen when we get down to this thing where we're going to begin to do what? Crying out to God saying, help, God help me. God help us. Do something for our families. What's going to happen? They're going to fast. They're going to pray. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Look up here. See that goose egg? Nothing is going to happen. God very simply said this to me. And he said it in something that I prophesied that's on the front of the web page uh, on, up on the satellite. And it went something at the end of it like this, was he said, because you have th thought to have been your own God, and when all this stuff comes down upon you, then, then, then what are you going to do? Then let's see if the God that you have become, have become can deliver this people. And there's no way that we're going to be able to deliver this people. There is no way, folks, when this thing comes down the way it's going to come down, that there's going to be food on the grocery stores for you to get. That's the reason I'm trying to say you're going to have to start putting away food. You're going to have to get ready. It's coming. It's coming down. It's going to happen. And yet at the same time, people say, oh, no, you know, we'll have food within 24 hours if anything happens. No, you won't. No. There is not enough stores in this country to take care of people in this country. I used to know how many days, but it's just a few days. That's all, that, that's all that we have. That's all that there is. Let's go on to the 13th verse. Then said I, O Lord God, behold, the prophets say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you a, a, a assured peace in this place. And that word assured is a lasting peace in this place. So don't listen to them, prophets. Said uh, that, That's what they're saying. They're going to have peace. Then the Lord saith unto them, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. Now there it is, using his name in vain. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision, a divination, and a thing of naught, and the deceit of their heart. And boy, that is really something, the deception of their heart. What is he saying? They have been deceived, and they are, they are laying this out like the prophets that they once used to be, that I did you once use, is really what he's saying. Look, as we get into, get into, in, into 15... He says that therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the, the, the prophets, the prophesy in my name, and I send them not. Yet, say, yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in the land. By sword and famine thou shall, those prophets will be consumed. In other words, they're going to be destroyed. They're going to be killed by the same means in which they're saying doesn't happen. Now listen. And to the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, and they shall have none to bury them, uh, them, them, bury them, them, their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness upon them. Now please understand where we have come to. Please understand this, that we now have come to this, this, this portion that I've mentioned or alluded to since we started last evening. And it's simply, it is simply this, that bless God, that if you're going to listen to these false prophets again, that's what this thing's all about. This thing is about you understanding. This is real. The problem that you and I don't understand, it's life and it's death. Isn't that what the Lord said? My word, their life or their death. And, and life or their death. You choose. Then he said, choose life that both you and thy seed may live. But what we're doing is we're making up our own rules, and that's what we have done. The church has made their own rules for so long, folks, that we just sit back and let them make the rules. That's exactly what we do. We just sit back and let them make the rules. And they make the rules in any way, any shape, or any form, and we just go along with it. If it's convenient, we're all for it. 
We're all for it. And that's the reason, again, I'm, I, you know, I keep saying, if you'll go back and you'll study this thing, then you'll begin to understand something that I've begun to understand. And most of you in this room already understand it. The church, we got duped. We've been sold a bag of rocks and don't even know it for the most part of the church. You that are here that are part of the remnant, you do understand that. And you're beginning to say, hey, look, I'm done with this. And what I'm trying to do is to bring you to enough depth with this thing that you can come out from those curses and you can walk free from those curses and you can walk upright before the Lord thy God and when the windows of heaven open and God begins to pour out His blessings upon you, they will hunt you down and overtake you and your neighbors and your friends and your family is going to say, Hey, how is it that you're so blessed and we're not? And you'll say, Ho, ho, ho. I can tell you it's because I keep the law. I keep the commandments. I keep Shabbat. I keep new moon. It's because I don't speak God's name in vain. Now I hope, above everything else, you've learned something here tonight because the charismatic movement, which was, which was, was prompted by the, by the by, if you will, the Pentecostal movement, has got so far, have you ever been to one of those charismatic deals where you start walking down the hall and all them people are lined up out there to give you a word? Come on. What is that? They're just putting curses on you while you come down through there. There are none of them people called to God to be out there doing that. None of them! And yet at the same time, there they are. They all got a word. They all got a word. They all got a word. And I'm going to tell you something. You may be all the right meaning people in this world. But that's the reason, again, I keep saying over and over and over again. People are seeking after a word. People are looking for God to tell them something that they're too lazy to fast and pray to find out for themselves. And then they come to people like some of you and then you're dumb enough to start giving them all these words, hoping that they're all from God. Sometimes we want to tell people we're going to practice on you. I don't see anything in that book. Now listen to me, I see nothing in that book that says you can practice on anybody. Anytime that you say God said, you have got your putting your life and the life of your family in jeopardy. Anytime. But the Lord is showing me the Lord is doing this, or the Lord is doing that. See, I, 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 you know, and again, I, I said, I, I detest all of it. I have from the very beginning. It took God, I can't tell you how long, to get me where I would even begin to give somebody a word of knowledge. I hated it. I've been in too many services where they walked down the, the aisles and said, Oh, brother, I see God is called, oh, sister. Oh, I'm, I've been too many of those services. I've been in too many of them sitting there going, that's no more God than, a, than, than, than bless God, a doorknob. That's not God. And what is that going to do for your life anyway? Come on. Now, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word will be established. I realize that. But let's stop and think about this for a minute. Why would you want to run to get a word from God? Why would you want that to happen? So you could do what and you could be what? See, it, it makes no sense to me because the fact of it is, folks, there is more to the kingdom than a word of knowledge. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we can't, you can't live, and you can't live, and I can't tell you how many people are trying to live off of, well, now, I'm going to tell you, I was in a meeting back in, back in 95, Brother Deckard, and it was prophesied over me that, bless God, that I would raise the dead. I'd do all that thing. And I said, well, just how many dead have you seen raised? Well, none yet, Brother Deckard. But you understand, I believe that was the truth. And you want I can tell them? You've been cursed because you heard it, you participated in it, and they're cursed. Now what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Can you understand why your lives get looking like uh, uh, turning, a, let's look a little, a little easy, Lord, um, uh, looking like a, a, a bless God, a, a brown, brown paper sack. That's the best I can do. <laughs> Boy, I struggled with that too, didn't I? I wrestled that one. <laughs> Woo! Pulled that one right, pulled that one right out. I did, I pulled that, pulled that one right out. Yeah. But you understand what I'm saying. Folks, we've got to understand it ain't a game. 
This is life and it's death. And we're serving it out, bless God, like here it is, 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 and here it is. And then we walk away and think, bless God, oh, how I love you, Jesus. Oh, your little man has given the words or your little gal has given her words today. And we made fools out of ourselves. We're making fools out of God. And we're not even smart enough to get it all figured out, folks. But you know, when it comes to the things of God, it's not real hard. And I, and I think that we'll, we'll probably close tonight simply with this by getting you to begin to come across the realization of the do's and the don'ts. And there's absolute do's, there's absolute don'ts to these things. You don't get yourself in a position. See, that's the reason I keep saying if you're in a church and they've got somebody there trying to call themselves a prophet or a prophetess, and all they're doing is giving words of knowledge, you run from them people. Don't walk, you run from them, you get away from them. Because there is more to church than that. That's not that, that I mean, that's all part of it. Again, prophets will give those words, but that is the main thrust of their ministry. When you go places where the main thrust is a word, getting a word of knowledge, you're in the wrong building. Now, I know that I'm cross-graining some things here tonight, but you just hang on because I'm telling you the truth of the matter. I'm not here, to bless God, to, to make friends. I'm here to tell you the truth. The truth is you can't afford to participate in something that's going to turn your life and your family into a curse. You can't afford to get in the... And how many people... How many people going to get yeah, you? Bless God, they're going to chase. Well, I hear that, you know, I hear Brother Deckard's going to be such and such. I hear Brother Deckard. You know what? I've been to Barbados enough that, you know, when I get down there, the last time we was down there, we had 1,100 people show up. And I'm going to tell you something. When Brother Deckard comes to Barbados, and I've been going to Barbados for almost, well, 25 years, they know that there's not going to be any word of knowledge come through the, through the crowd. They know that. And if they come up and say something, I said, turn around, go over and sit down and shut up. You want to hear from God, you fast, fast and pray like I do. You know why? Because you see there's a different set of rules works down there than does in America. Now, isn't that something? And if somebody goes down, oh, they love it. I'm going to tell you when somebody comes down there to Barbados and start giving words, they love it. They rush to them places and be the same 1,100 people and they all at least get one word. Have you ever been in a place where they come around and give you the second and the third word? Yeah. Oh, they just get warmed up. Dear God in heaven, I just get warmed up and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Now let me close with how important all this is. In this room, when I first came here and we was on, actually holding services in that room without the petitions in there, we had an evangelist from California that called himself a prophet. Now, I'm not sure how that worked, but anyway, that's what he called himself. And he came here, and everybody in the room got at least two words and maybe three. Now, I became very concerned about it. I'm young, all right? This is the first church that God ever made me, made me, you understand the word made me, establish. And I'm, I'm nervous because I'm responsible for the people, and I know all those words aren't right. And, and so anyway, I, 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 I began to, you know, kind of, well, you know, I, well, I, I need to shut him down. And so finally, I just told him, I said, Brother, let me tell you something. I said, we're going to shut this meeting down. So he goes in front of the people the next night, and he said, now, folks, Brother Deckard thinks we need to shut this meeting down, but he said, I just want to take a vote. How many of you think that we ought to go a little bit longer? Wrong! And the meeting ended right then and right there. Now, let me tell you what happened. My mother was, I forget how old she would have been at that time, a whole lot, she's 81 now, so, but she was here. And so he, so he came up to her, and he said to her, he said, oh, he said, I see you have high blood pressure. Now, the thing that I had been trying to teach those people, including my mother, was that when somebody speaks something to you that you don't know, Mike, what happened when somebody come and tried to play hands on me and prophesy in Modesto? It wasn't funny, was it? I ate them up with no salt. Don't you ever come and lay your hands on me. I don't want your stinking familiar spirits, and I'm not going to have them, all right? You keep your hands off of me, especially when I'm under this anointing. If I want to shake hands with you, I'll put my hand out. 
If I want to lay hands on you, then that's, that's your decision whether you want me to do that or not. But don't you come up and start laying your stinking hands on me because I don't want your garbage. And that's how important I know that all this is, all right? That's a prophet. So my mother, so my mother didn't say, and I tried to tell him, I said, when, when you receive something and it's not God, say, I don't accept that. You've got to reject that. You've got to rip that seed up and you've got to dis, discard it from your spirit man, all right? Well, my mother didn't do that, and bless God, and, and so he laid hands on her, and he began to pray and rebuke this, this thing of high blood pressure and all this stuff, and, 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 I'm, and I, after it was over, I went to Mom, and I said, Mom, I said, I didn't think, you don't have high, do you have high blood pressure? She said, no, I've never had high blood pressure. She said, I've never had high blood pressure. Well, I said, Mom, I didn't, I didn't think so. Now, this is how young and naive I am, all right? And now maybe you can understand after this story why I've become the bulldog that I now really am, all right? Within two weeks, my mom had to go to the doctor. She had high blood pressure. Now, fortunately, she got a son that can get a hold of God. And God delivered her and set her free from high blood pressure. Folks, that's how serious this stuff is. Don't you, some of you people are carrying around some baggage that, bless God, that people have put on you that you need to get rid of. You need to understand something. You need to understand how real and how dangerous all this is. And I just thought, you know, I, I sit back and I just cringe at all of it. I just cringe. I think, how could people be so stupid? People that ought to know better. People that, you know why people don't know better? Because they don't have anybody to teach them to these depths. That's the reason people don't know. There's nobody to teach them. And when people like me begin to teach these kind of things, then I uncover that stuff. And when I begin to uncover that stuff, the next thing that seems to happen is that, bless God, the whole thing begins to come, becomes completely unglued because people say, well, you know, I, I, I mean, you, now you've run our meeting. Well, let me tell you something. There's no fact, there's no doubt, ifs, ands, or buts about it, that, bless God, I'll, I, I've run some meetings over the whole thing, but you don't need to be wearing or carrying around the curses that's being put on some of you. And you thought it was all innocent. You thought it was all just a good time in Jesus. And after all, the Lord God would never let a, 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 an evil spirit come on me. Well, why? He put, one on, he put one on Saul, didn't he? Why? Because Saul was disobedient. When you start going to church for anything besides the Word of God, you have become disobedient. When church only means to you getting a word so you can edify your flesh, man, and after all, that's all that is. All that is is a flesh man trip. It's got nothing to do with your spirituality. It's got nothing to do with the furtherment of you into God's kingdom. It's just one of those, oh, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, they recognize me. Did you hear what they said? They recognize me. And I always say you better really be careful about who's laying hands on you. One time I was in church and I was ministering and, 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 and the people started coming up and bless God, there was a spirit of lust. I've never been, I've never been again in any church, had about four or 500 people in it and there was so much lust in that, in that uh, sanctuary that, that I'm gonna tell you what, I got to thinking that, I, that, you know, that, that something was wrong with my, my spiritual uh, reading, all right? I thought that yeah, there's something wrong here. I, I, they, they, one after another and it was lust, it was lust, it was lust, it was lust. And I finally just turned around and I said, God, where did all this lust come from? And the Lord said to me, he said, look at the pastor. Come on, folks, I'm sharing with you some stuff that, bless God, is absolute truth that the church needs to hear. And I looked, and that pastor had lust all over him. He said, son, it's called transferal a spirit. You become what lays hands on you. You become that, folks. And if you're in a place, and I don't care, I don't care what it looks like, I don't even care what it smells like. If there's not a real prophet of God over it, stay out of them. You're better off sitting home, reading your Bible, and doing what you do than out here carrying around and, and, and living in curses. You're better off at home studying the Word of God yourself. Be, oh, i got to have that fellowship. Gather yourselves together, and more so on that day when you see that day approach. 
Yes, I know that scripture very well, but I also know that, bless God, if you can't gather yourselves together with the right people, you don't need to be gathering. Okay? So, and so, there, there, you know, there again, that's when we get into these things that you've got to be, you got to be quick to understand. You know, lay, no, lay, your hand, lay hands on no man suddenly. Isn't that what the scripture says? And yet, boy, they want to run right out and bang, get their hands on you, don't they? Oh, now I'll pray for you. Let me get going. And I'm looking around. I'm going, dear God in heaven, what's happening to us? What has happened to us? We've got ourselves so messed up. We're walking in so much curse that, bless God, that it, 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 it's hard telling what it's going to take to break the church loose from the curses. And yet the church, oh, well, I'm not cursed. Oh, no, it's like I said in the beginning when I got into Deuteronomy 28. The diseases, the sickness, all the stuff, the blind, everything that blessed God that was a curse in the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy is sitting in the church today. Every bit of it. Now why? Because you see that the section that you read in those first 14 verses are blessings. And he said, you shall be blessed, that these blessings shall hunt you down and overtake you if you will do, observe and do all that I have commanded you. And that's the key. And so when, there's, when, when the time have come, and, and, and they do come, that every once in a while somebody will come to me and say, well, you know, Brother Decker, you know, I, this thing just isn't working for me. And I said, well, you know, there's only one thing could be wrong. You're, you're walking in curses. Well, now, I think I've been delivered of all that. And I said, then why aren't you blessed? See, God's word isn't, isn't bless, God, uh, bless God, a maybe and or if thing. God's word is final, all right? And when God says, if you'll do this, I'll bless you. If you don't do this, I won't bless you. You'll be cursed. So it's life, it's death. It's life, it's death. It's blessings, it's cursings. And you know what he says? You choose. See, what I have done, good, bad, or ugly for you this weekend, now I have brought you that have sat under this into a position that you have now heard. Now you've got to choose. As I said, we're going to break these curses off of you tonight because of your ignorance. And God help you from this day on. If you're dumb enough to go back and crawl in it, don't you come to me. And don't you start saying, well, I don't whine and I don't know what's wrong, Brother Decker. Don't do it. Don't you dare do it because I'm not, you're, you're looking at a prophet that I'll just tell you right there's the door. Don't let the door hit you on the backside out and don't, 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 don't bother coming back. Why? Because I don't have time for all this. I'm trying to set a people free so they can do the things in which God has called them to do. I'm trying to get you to the place where you can work the works of God instead of, bless God, walking in the curses you've been walking in. And again, when you begin to examine and look at the charismatic movement, that's all that thing was. That's all it still is today, is to get yourself a word from somebody. Anybody, you know, I've been in services where now, if anybody feels God giving them a word for anybody, just get right up and get right up and go lay hands on them and give it to them. I'm going, oh, that's fun. And I'm sitting there, you know, you almost want to cry. You're saying, God, what's wrong with all this? What's wrong with this? Not only are you cursing yourself, you're cursing them. And then they get running around. One time I had a woman that, blessed God, that came to me that had been in a, in a service over, I think, in St. Louis. And, and, was, and again, the, 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 the person that was there was, is famous. He, gave, he walked down the aisle and gave her a word and said, Sister, I see that you are going to be a writer for God. You're going to write books and they're going to be anointed of God and, and filled with the Holy Ghost and people are going to be saved and set free by your writings. Walked right on. That sister attended here at that time. She came to me and she said, well, Brother Deckard, I was in such and such a meeting last night. And I said, well, what'd you learn? She said, well, I learned that, bless God, I'm called to God to be an a, a anointed writer, to write books. I said, you ever wrote a book? Nope. I said, you ever wrote a paper? Nope. I said, well, how, how's this going to work? Did, did he pour oil on you or you're all anointed to do this? Or how's it going to work? Well, uh, you know, I come home and thought it over. I'm taking a class out here at the, at, at, at the college. Okay. 
I stood around and walked off. About six months later, she comes up to me and she looks at me and she said, it wasn't God, was it? And I said, nope. She said, I flunked the class. <laughs> What's it all about, folks? It's about trying to, to fool you into believing that somebody that wants to look important, sounds important, and gives out something to make them sound like God is dealing with them. And folks, that's all that it is. It's no more, it's no less. It's life, it's death, it's blessings, it's cursings. You choose. And you do have a right to choose. And that's the reason that I think it's so important for you to, to, to understand that. You have a right to choose. If you're in a, in a service and they start going around pouring out words, get up and walk out. You, you can choose to leave. You don't have to have a reason. You, well, it's kind of embarrassing. I'd rather be embarrassed to, to, to no end and bless God uh, other than carry the curse out the door. You say, well, I think it's a God. Then sit there and take your chances. Sit there and take your chances. Because, because when you're dealing with these kind of things, you understand something. See, it's not only you, it's your family. It's everything that you're putting your hand to. It's all part of that. And yet, yet we get ourselves so bound up into these things because, again, we want, to be, we want to be involved in the supernatural because why? We are spirit first. That's why we're wanting to be involved in this stuff. That We want to hear people say, thus saith the mouth of God. We want to, we want to receive those things and to know that they're, that they're coming from God. But the, the, the whole absolute uh, uh, thing in it is, is very simple. That it doesn't work that way only if God is in the midst of it. And again, uh, some of the understanding of how do we know. Understand, just because somebody comes and the pastor says, oh, you know, they work in the gifts, that doesn't mean jack apple nothing. So is the devil, right? So is a familiar spirit, right? So does the dreamer of dreams and the necromancers. They work in the spirit too. And, and bless God, just because they come in the name of... See, I've had people say, well, now, if they come in the name of Jesus, Brother Decker, they can't have a familiar spirit. So says who? Where's the Bible cover that at? They can't have a familiar spirit, and yet Paul said, you know, you've got to beware that an angel of darkness can come as an angel of light. And, and we're trying to say, because, and I'll, I've had that told me, to me numbers of times. Well, now, Brother Digger, you don't need to be concerned about that. Uh, bless God, if they come and anointed, well, bless God, then, you know, anointed by what? Light or darkness? See, both, both that carries anointings. Darkness carries an anointing. Light carries an anointing. And if you ever have the opportunity to travel to do what I've done in the third world, you'll find out something that out in those places that I go in the bush areas, that the witch doctors through the anointing of darkness control the people completely to such a degree that, bless God, to such a degree that they fear them for their very lives. You cross the witch doctor, you die. Everybody knows in those villages, you don't monkey with the witch doctors. And then along come the prophet. And I monkeyed with them. I put some of them in the dirt. I pissed on some of their graves, and I'll piss on the rest of them if they don't get out of my way when I go back. And you say, well, I don't like that. I don't care whether you like it or not. I didn't ask you to vote for it. I'm just telling you what I've done, what I'm going to do. The rest of them, I've run over the mountains to, into Mozambique. And they can stay over there. Why? Because their God can't compete with my God. And I've had, I have had to put that on the line too many years, too many times have I watched as, as that darkness would come and try to do what? Would try to come to steal, to kill, and destroy. Can't do it. I've had to make dolls. Uh, I always wanted to get one of those dolls. I bet I look funny. Little, little, little fat ball headed guy, huh? With a cape and a beanie, huh? They're sticking pins in. And you know something? They prophesied, now listen, the darkness prophesied, the white man will die before he leaves. He'll never leave this, this, this part of the world. He will die before he leaves. They come and tell me that. I said, you go back and tell them the little bull-headed guy said this, I will come back next year. I will curse the ground they're on. They'll die. And then I will come and do what I said I was going to do on their grave. And I did. And that's exactly what happened. This isn't a game. It's life, it's death, it's blessings, it's cursings. 
and you happen to be dealing with an old boy that swings the sword from both ways. One side of it's the blessings, you mess with me, the other side will curse you and it'll do it real quick. Why? Because that's where I live. That, not because maybe that's where I like to live, that's where I have to live. That's what goes on, that's what's went on. In the third. Do you know, where were you at when I was in the third world and all this was going on? Well, we didn't even know you, Brother Deckard. Even if you had a known me, where would you have been at? Well, we was down at the, you know, the first church of the righteous receiving the word from the local prophet. Should have been home on your face interceding, you know? Praise God. Stand up, we're going to pray.